I think we're at a very interesting stage today in the development of quantum science and quantum technologies. It's still at a fairly early stage, uh, but we're making very rapid progress and I think there's a lot that's uh, coming in the near future. A lot of people are talking about some of the first applications of uh, quantum processors and quantum devices in areas of quantum simulation or quantum chemistry. So being able to design better uh, catalysts for certain uh, processes or uh, perhaps designing drugs, things like that. Some of the first applications may also be basically solving interesting science problems. There's uh, interesting ideas about employing quantum information ideas to make enhanced sensors that can do a better job of uh, a whole host of functions. And, um, and also there's starting to be more development of algorithms or ideas about ways of applying quantum computers for other kinds of problems, for instance, in pattern recognition, machine learning, and the like. You know, I think uh, it's also hard still at this stage to know what all the end applications of quantum technology will really be. If we look at sort of uh, the analogous phase in the development of conventional computing, Again, there were only a handful of very niche sort of uh, defense-related things like uh, solving uh, nuclear weapons uh, uh, problems or, um, uh, again, cryptography. Uh, and a lot of the consumer applications, uh, cell phones, the internet, uh, email, and all those things were not really envisioned until uh, much later on in the coming of the information revolution. So I think it's hard to predict if there really will be a second wave of the information uh, age and if that will involve quantum, but if it does, I expect that the real applications will be things that we also don't anticipate today. So I think there are a few ways we can start to prepare for uh, a quantum future. We can look to try and put together the kinds of infrastructure and uh, the ecosystem that will allow the development of these kind of technologies. I think it's not something we can rely on being solved just by the government or by uh, the private sector uh, or by academics alone. It's going to require uh, a, a close working relationship between all of those, all of those entities and all of those stakeholders.